As a follow-up to this morning, I stumbled into something that I did not even know. While I was talking, you, if you weren't here, we were talking about how Solomon was talking about how selfishness is a problem in life. And I was comparing that to the phenomenon in our technology age of selfies, where you take a picture of yourself. I did not obviously know this, but apparently today was Selfie Sunday. Now, and I don't understand all this technology stuff, but I, I, I sort of get it. There's something called a hashtag. And apparently if you put this sign on something that you post somewhere, anybody else can find it by a search word, like whatever. Of all the people who took selfies today and hashtagged it, there were over 7 million today. That's not even including those who took them but did not do whatever that is. Hashtagging? I don't know. Don't know. Never done it. But I did think about this. I thought about coming tonight and having everybody get their phones out. And we're all going to do a selfie and put up on our website and say, look where I was on Selfie Sunday. But I didn't want all of us to become part of these statistics. So I decided not to. But uh, I was allowed to be a part of Selfie Sunday, thanks to Jalen Ross, who came and took my picture with her. And then I get someone telling me that Jenna took one and dedicated it to me. And 116 people said, that is really good. <laughs> and um, so all of a sudden, I feel you know, very loved <laughs> and, and appreciated all over the country, I suppose. So anyway. Interesting. I just stumbled right into that. I had no idea that this was such a, it wasn't on my calendar, Selfie Sunday, so I didn't know to preach about it. But uh, rather interesting stuff. All right. John chapter 6. Let's go there. John chapter 6. In our Bible study this evening, we're going to deal with another one of the questions that came from the man who had all the answers. A question from Jesus where he asked, do you also want to go away? That was in the text that was just read. In order to understand this question, let's go back in the chapter and see what's happening in the immediate text. So go back in chapter 6, go back to the beginning of the chapter. In order to understand this question, we have to understand the people that are surrounding Jesus during this time. All right? So you go back to chapter 6 and verse 2. The first group was the great multitude. And this multitude followed Jesus everywhere he went. We find out from the first part of this chapter that the reason they followed him was because when they needed something to eat, miraculously, he provided it. He had said to his disciples, go and find food for these people. And we can't do that. There's too many of them. And he took what they did have and he made it enough to feed everybody. So you have the multitudes of people who are following Jesus all over, wherever he goes because he is going to do something for them. He is going to heal them. He's going to feed them. He is doing things that they like. Maybe that is a part of their selfishness. So that's one group. Look over in chapter 6 and verse 41. We have another group. These are the Jews. Now the Jews hung around Jesus, but the reason they hung around him was to complain and to argue and to try to trip him up and to cause him problems. So in this group of people milling around, you have that big multitude. Then you have the Jews who are there. Now go down to verse 66. Then a part of this 
milieu of people were a group of people that he called his disciples. So you have the multitude, you have the Jews, and then a part of that group were the disciples. And in this case, the multitudes kept coming for what he did for them. The Jews kept coming so they could argue with him, and the disciples left. Many of the disciples took off because they didn't like the implications of what he was saying. And what he had just talked about was a commitment level. You have to eat of me. You have to take me in. You have to devour me. Jesus has to be your life. They they didn't understand it. Too hard. So they left. All right? Now go down to chapter 7 and in verse 5. Now we have the brothers of Jesus. This is an interesting one. The brothers of Jesus came around Jesus to ask him to get away from them. Isn't that interesting? His brothers did not believe in him. So they said, you get away from here. We don't want you around anymore. Go somewhere else. Now there's another group, just a guy, verse 71. Then you have Judas Iscariot. Judas hung around Jesus for one reason, so that he could get close to him. He could become a confidant, and he could turn him in and betray him. All right, these are the people who are hanging around Jesus. But he asked this question, do you also want to go away? He asked it to the sixth group, and the sixth group were the twelve. To the twelve, he said, starting in verse 67, do you want to go away? Now, first of all, notice how the question was not framed. Jesus did not say, why have you gone away? The twelve were still there. They weren't part of the disciples who took off and ran because they didn't understand. Oh, they didn't understand, but they stayed. He didn't ask, why have you left? He did not ask, where are you going? As though the disciples were pondering it, these 12. They're thinking about it. They're in their heads. They're trying to figure out, are we staying or are we going? He didn't ask. Where are you going? He didn't even ask, are you going? As though they hadn't made up their minds. If he had said, where are you going? They would have said, oh yeah, we're going. We just don't know where. If he had asked, are you going? They would have thought, well, I don't know. That's what we would be led to believe if he asked that question. We would wonder, they're trying to make up their minds if they're leaving or not. He didn't ask any of these questions. What did he ask? He said, do you want to go away? Do you want to go away? Now, the word that is used there is a very common word, but it's a word that means, the word is thelo, and it means I wish or I desire. You could also say I will. So he says, do you wish to go away? Do you desire to go away? Now, he's not asking this question because he doesn't know the answer. At least twice in this text, back in chapter 6, when he asked about the food how they're going to feed everybody. Look at verse 6 of chapter 6. This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. He asked Philip, get some food. It wasn't because he didn't know what he was going to do. Jesus knew he was going to perform a miracle and feed everybody. 
And also, the text says that Jesus already knew. Verse 64, he knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. He already knew. It's not like he's asking this question to gain knowledge or to gain information. He's asking the question, I think, for them. Do you also want to go away? He wants them to verbalize so they can hear their own hearts talking. I also think he asked the question to show his own heart to them. I think he's sad at this point. I think he has seen all of these other groups of people and how they are reacting to the situation. All these other ones. And then he looks at the 12 and he says, Do you want to go to? I think he's sad. I think his heart is on display. And I think he's challenging them to look at their own hearts. I think the question also is a question asked not because there was a lack of evidence that all of these groups of people could have used to make a good decision. There was plenty of evidence. Go back in chapter 6. Look at verse 2. You might want to, uh, you might want to mark these in your Bible because these words, this word comes up four times. Chapter 2. The great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed. Look at verse 14. Those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did. Look at verse 26. Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the sign." Look at verse 30. They said, what sign will you perform? Something about this word sign four times. In fact, John uses this all the way through his book. The concept, I think, of the Gospel of John is that he points out he uses seven miracles. John uses seven miracles in his book to show something a particular thing about Jesus at each moment. Seven different things. Sign is a word that points to something else, right? The sign is not the thing. It points to the thing, right? No matter where you find a sign, you don't go, that's the thing. No, that's the sign pointing to the thing. The evidence was clear. There was plenty of evidence right there that pointed to something. Notice what happened. They saw the signs that he performed. Verse 2. In verse 14, they actually said, uh, the text actually says, when they saw the sign, they said, Truly, this is the prophet who was to come. What they saw was not the sign. They saw the action. What did they see? There was a little bitty food, then there's a whole lot of food. That's the sign. They saw the sign as the thing, not as a sign pointing to the thing. They saw it as something in itself. Wow, he made a lot of food. Instead of, here's the sign, pointing to something else. In fact, Jesus calls their attention to it, does he not? Verse 26. Why did you follow me? Not because you saw the signs. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't verse 14 say they saw the sign? Yeah. What is the point? 
Jesus is making the point that you saw the sign as the something. You didn't see the sign as pointing to something. You didn't see the sign. You just wanted to eat. So what happened in verse 30? They said, when are you going to do a sign? What? Isn't that interesting how that worked? Isn't that fascinating how that worked? This interplay between they saw the sign, they didn't see the sign. You know, that song just popped in my head, right? I saw the sign. It opened up my mind. I saw the sign. Don't remember anything more about it. Don't know who sang it. Don't know what it's about. It may fit this. I don't know. I have to think about it. The point is, I'm, I'm mulling over in my head. I'll just carry on the conversation while I'm thinking. But here's the point. The sign that they saw, they saw it here, not as it was doing this. Okay, now, all of that is just, I think, factual background material. So now, as I look at this chapter and as we look at it, what are we supposed to do with it? We're supposed to see pointing. We're supposed to see something pointing for us. It should be a sign for us pointing somewhere. And you know where I think it's pointing? I think this chapter is pointing right here. And you can do that to yourself. This chapter is pointing right here. Notice how so. Here is the sign asking you and me a question. One, are you like the multitudes? Are you hanging around Jesus just because of what he can do for you? Are you using him? Are you one of these people just hanging around just because you're going to get something in a way that just is all about you and nobody else and not even about God? It's not even about Jesus. It's just about me. I want to be fed. I want to be clothed. I want to be taken care of physically. Are you one of the multitudes? Number two, I think this... Chapter is pointing as a sign right here, and it's saying, Are you like the Jews? You're here. You're hanging around. You're in the group. You're always there. But you keep complaining and griping and being upset, and nothing is ever good enough, and you're angry and you're mad. Is that sign telling you that? Number three, is it pointing at you and saying, at one time you believed, but now you've gone. Your faith has waned, just like these disciples who walk no more with him. Your faith is gone. Maybe because the difficulties of life have beaten you down and you didn't maintain your faith. Maybe because you've listened to academic people make statements that don't seem to fit with the God of the Bible, and therefore your faith is gone. Are you one of those disciples who's running away? Are you one of his brothers? The interesting thing to me about the brothers was they wanted him to go. They didn't leave. The brothers didn't go. They wanted him to go. You know why I think that is? I think that's because him hanging around them made them feel bad. That's what I think. I think Jesus being in their presence made them feel bad, and therefore they want him out of the way, because if you push Jesus away, then I don't feel bad. Because his life magnified that their lives were not right. So I think they wanted him to leave so they could feel better. Are you like one of the brothers? You'd just rather get Jesus away so that you don't feel guilty. You don't feel less committed. You don't want to feel that lack of commitment. You don't want to feel that I'm not really into this. So just shove him away and I don't have to feel it anymore. 
Are you Judas? There's probably some. I think there are congregations of the Lord's people all over where Judas sits. And they have gone in and destroyed an entire congregation and, and messed up entire groups of people just because they are angry. I dare say not one of them really fits most of us. But the final sign was this. Am I like the twelve? Am I here? I sit in a pew. My name's on the roster. My picture's on the website in the online directory. I come to Bible class. I'm here in worship. I get my Bible out and read every now and then, and I pray over every meal. But you know what? I'd rather not be doing this. And that's his question to his 12. Would you rather not be doing this? Physically, you're here. But emotionally, would you rather be somewhere else? Are you tired of this? Do you really want to do this? That's the final sign pointing at me. Do I really want to be here? Or is this my duty? Is this what I've just traditionally done all of my life? Is this what I do to keep my family happy? Is this what I do to make myself feel not so guilty anymore? Do you really want to be here? Or as Jesus said, do you want to go away. I think that's John chapter 6. Well, think about that question. See if it fits what you think is going on there. I, I really am enjoying these studies on my own. I'm enjoying uh, the opportunity to understand what these questions are about. And uh, I'm still looking if there are others, questions that, that you come across that you want me to talk about. And, we can study together. We certainly will do that. Uh, before we leave tonight, maybe someone wants to obey the gospel. Because without obeying the gospel, we are lost, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. So tonight, if you are ready to put on your Lord in baptism, being buried in water to wash away sins, or if you're ready to uh, have the Lord take the burdens and cares of life away, shared by these brethren, we're here for you as we stand and sing.